Thank you for inviting the Council for Higher Education Accreditation, CHIA, to engage in the conversation regarding the 2023 U.S. Supreme Court decisions on higher education admissions and the effects of that decision on diversity, equity, and inclusion. However, before that discussion is presented, and for the audience who may not be familiar with CHIA, please allow me to frame this discussion within the backdrop of who we are. CHIA is the only non-governmental organization in America that provides recognition to accrediting organizations. Our focus is ensuring that accrediting organizations meet rigorous standards of accountability, transparency, and ethical protocols when reviewing institutions of higher education. Our focus is also the assurance that accrediting organizations are in a supportive position to identify academic quality and integrity in the institutions that they review. One of the 24 standards that CHIA requires for recognition of accrediting organizations is the commitment and implementation of diversity, equity, and inclusion principles within their respective organizations. The U.S. Supreme Court's decision to ban race-conscious admission has sparked very concerning debates about the mission of universities and colleges to provide access to many capable but marginalized students who have experienced access to select institution of higher education. The U.S. Supreme Court in a two 6-3 and 6-2 decisions prohibited race as a factor in college admissions. Two high-profile universities, Harvard and the University of North Carolina, were the focus of those decisions. Beyond the court's decision is the targeted effect those decisions have on diversity, equity, and inclusion which complements the ethos of social justice. There are no coincidences in life and the political dismantling of affirmative action, DEI, banning of books, the vitriol against immigrants, and dismantling of women's rights all send an all too clear signal that there is a demonstrative and volatile shift and cultural norms and acceptance of all people. Higher education and access to its portals have always been a part of the American dream. It is the platform for academic freedom, free and liberating thoughts, social mobility, learned citizenry, and social equality. Underserved students and their families for decades were excluded from that dream and denied opportunities that majority students experience and often took for granted. Affirmative action policies sought to equalize or at least try to offer a balance to the college admission process. The removal of these policies send a clear signal the Supreme Court asserts that all is fair and equal in the world and that race should not be a factor in promoting access to higher education. Of course, the very reality is that in the United States, fair and equal are not synonymous when applied to certain racial groups. There is a long-standing belief among many conservative politicians that affirmative action policies and college admissions are solely for the benefit of minority students. This belief fosters the thinking that special favors 
are accorded to one group over the preference of another. Affirmative action policies do not suggest that one group is less capable, less competent, less prepared, or less qualified. These policies were needed to ensure that underrepresented students who were indeed very capable, very competent, prepared, and qualified are not denied because of their race. The benefits of a heterogeneous college campus are immense. The diversity of a campus reflects exchange of experiences, ideas, cultures, and a value appreciation for others. Is that not what is expected in our American culture? America, the country where everyone can pursue happiness, liberty, and justice for all? The Supreme Court also gives individual states discretion in deciding whether to show whether to allow or prohibit affirmative action in their public universities. However, this discretion varies from state to state, and the policies of such states like Texas, Florida, Tennessee, Ohio, and many other political conservative states have proven that they are DEI restrictive and negates any inclusive activities in its public education and post-secondary institutions. So what are the impacts and after effects? The good and hopeful news is that higher education institutions and private secondary institutions that are committed to DEI will find alternate ways to be inclusive and find ways to support access. The not so good news is what happens to generations of underserved students and families who would be the recipients of those decisions over a long period of time. Many minority students will experience a cultural and psychological shift that will systemically foster the belief that they are second class citizens in their home state and in America. Institutions and states that support these decisions will be politically crippled and will reluctantly try to operate practices of accessibility. That reluctancy comes because they know that they are dependent on state funding. The erosion of institutional autonomy will certainly be challenged. Academic freedom and teaching and learning will be stifled and institutions positioned to reject DEI initiatives will experience a high degree of faculty resignations and a decrease in faculty applications from minority and majority faculty. Uh, faculty. Homogenizing institutions will perpetuate a platform for a homogenized culture. These are serious and frightening consequences, and America's national and global image will be challenged. The time for examining what American principles are truly realized and which principles are valid and fair for all citizens is now. The scars of American history will be repeated when any people are denied. Thank you.